powerful speaker is a preacher, and I'm a clearing and forwarding agent. All I know is give me your documents, I go to the port, I take out the things for you. And once in a while, I come and make announcements on the pulpit. But the kind of presentation that my, my pastor is declaring here <laughs> is one that uh, uh, um, I would say the, don't, uh, don't expect that from me. I will not go to crescendos. I will not go to diminuendos. I will just present this as the Lord has led me. I want to thank my pastor Tirop and the leadership of Nairobi Central Church for allowing me to come here and be amongst these very distinguished speakers. When I see my elder, Professor Ngeri, that I'm talking before him, I'm humbled. My Professor Ngeri is one of my mentors, and both in the private sector and in church. He's one man that I know that loves the Lord and has served the Lord wherever he's gone to. I'm seeing that my screen is not popping up, but I'm hoping that When I spoke to Kate, and uh, I asked her, first of all, I spoke to Pastor, and uh, he said, Elder Kidenda, can you come? Can you come to Nairobi Nairobi Central and talk to the youth? And he had called me quite a number of times, always at the last minute, and I had not said yes. So this time I said yes. I think this one, yeah. And, and so this time I agreed to come and speak. And unfortunately, time is not on my side because I need to be on, at the airport by, by noon. But I want to talk about um, leadership. And maybe I want to start by asking you to imagine that car that's called the Prado. You know the Prado, the Toyota Prado? Which part of the Prado do you think is the most important part of that car? Which is the most important part of a Prado car? Or take your car which is the most important part of your car? Which one? The engine. Okay. How many parts do you think make up a car? How many? 5,000? 2000. It is said that you need over 40,000 parts to make up a car. If you were to, if you were to count those parts, there are over 40,000. But which part do you think is the most important? Again. Which one? All of them. I think you are clever. Yes. Because someone would say it's the battery. But you know the battery will not work without a spark plug. Someone may say it is the alternator. But again, the alternator will not work without the connector. And even all those ones, if you don't have the key to get in, it will not work. So all, all parts, 
article. Can I see the next? Um, the next one, so the answer, so which is the most important part of the car? You say done. Every part is important and complements the other. Can you see the next card? Next slide, please. So who do you think is the most important person in that organization? Is it the manager? Is it the secretary? Is it the driver? What about your T-boy? What about the messenger who delivers that car, that document? For us, as, sorry, for us as clearing and forwarding agents, we need the, clear, the, the messenger to come to deliver the document in time. Um, what about the seller and the buyer? Who's, who is the most important person in that organization? Again, the answer is all of them are important. All of them are important. Everyone is a leader in his or her own area of, function, of functioning. However, I want to say that no manager is necessarily a leader. Although you can have a leader who is a manager. And why do I say that? It's because managers tend to maintain status quo, but leaders aim to transform the status to a better position. You will find that managers work with policies. They'll say nine to nine to five. And that is what will work in that office. If you keep another time, they will read the policy for you. If you spend beyond on the trip, they will lead read the policy because they are maintaining the status quo. Their job is to keep the policy, but leaders, they follow policy, or while the manager follows policy, you find that the leader creates the policy. The leader is the type who will come in and say, but <laughs> Mr. Kedenda, how long are you going to function like this? You must change this. Corona came. People will not work at home. Yeah, the, 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 the manager will be afraid to let people go and work at home. The leader will say, go and work at home, I will explain to the board. That's the difference between the manager and the leader, but all of them are important. You cannot say that because the leader is creating policies, therefore the manager has no role. You still need to implement it. Let's move on. And that takes us to Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 12, 21 to 27, that all of us know that the eye cannot claim to be the most important part. Neither may my legs do that, neither my hands that are working out there. Everybody, every part is important. To the extent that I would be a madman standing here talking if you're not there. My elder, <laughs> if, if, if you called a meeting and brought these people here and the other people are not there, we would be just mass and mad people talking to themselves. So everyone is important and we must take that into consideration as leaders. We must know that everyone contributes to the well-being of others. Let's move on. So what is leadership? It is primarily focused on uh, strategic goals of the organization, but also motivating the people to do their work. So that leadership will improve things, it will change things, it will develop, it will correct, it will advance things, and it will eventually bring success. And 
I want to just give an example that leadership brings changes. Some of us have read about the black Americans and their struggle in the US. To the extent that they could be removed from the vehicles and be told to go outside because our brothers, the whites, were getting into the vehicle and they had to come out. It took one lady called Rosa Parks to go mad <laughs> and say that I'm not going to. I am not coming out of this car. I'm not coming out of this bus, whatever you say. And sometimes it takes a leader to bring that change. It sometimes takes a leader to say no to what has been going on. So leadership is very important. Let's go to the next stage. Okay, sorry. So a leader is someone who takes charge. He is a person who is able to convince people to move on. My sister, you know you are very good at doing that. Okay, when we come to chambers and we want to talk, and we want to talk to uh, the our associations. There are people who can stand and persuade people, and sometimes naturally people default on them. Although some people are very talkative, but <laughs> negatively in the end. So it is a gift that you can have and use positively. And here we are talking of positive use of the gift of the gab. So a leader, as a leader, you want to find the best way to manage your people. You need to be able to have a style that fits in with the people, that is able to give direction without overwhelming them, giving them the confidence that yes, you know that they are contributing to this work and you want to listen to them, not dictate to them. It reminds me of an example. I was in Mombasa managing a company. We had a lot of trucks. And during El Nino, the, roads, the road to Mombasa was very bad. And suddenly we found that there's a part of the truck that is called the bell housing. The bell housing uh, houses the, the gearbox and the engine. And normally the cover of it is made up of aluminum. So when the roads became bad, on a, on a weekly basis, we were replacing like three to four bell houses. And a bell house would cost us almost 150,000. So I went, to, I went to, to my transport manager and I said, what's happening? Why are we replacing bell houses? Three in a week. And they couldn't tell me. They couldn't tell me. The transport manager could not tell me why we are losing them. So I said, I'm coming to the transport department and I want to meet you with the workshop manager because we must find out why it's not working. We came, they could not tell us what the problem. So I called the, I called the whole workshop, the drivers and the turn boys. I know the turn boys don't talk in front of drivers. But that day I said, anyone who's going to give me a solution to this problem, I'm going to give 10,000. And then I saw someone move, move sideways. And he came and said, Mr. Kedenda, we have been telling them, but they don't listen to us. We are the drivers, we know, but they don't listen to us. The problem is that because the roads were rough, there are what we call rubber mountings for the engine. They are falling off. And as they fall off, then the body is hitting against the body. And, and the aluminum bodies were cracking. But, the, but the, 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 the transport manager 
could not believe that. And so we went and bought the rubbers which were costing us 400 shillings each, <laughs> and we put them there, okay? And we solved them. And that takes us back to what we were saying, that everyone in the organization is important. That person, okay, he earned his 10,000, but do you know how much he saved us? Millions, millions, because it was terrible during uh, uh, that time. Let's move on to the next one. Next. So why leadership? Because nothing happens without leadership. Nothing changes without leadership. Nothing develops without someone taking leadership. Nothing improves in any situation without leadership. And you can come down. And you are always, in the end, led by someone. Even here, we have been led by someone. Sindio. So leadership is important. It's important for all of us. Do you know, sometimes it even takes a madman to be, to be a leader. Because someone can come to your home and insult you, my elder, but you need a, a mad brother to take leadership and throw him out of that place, okay? So leadership is a matter of initiative, a matter of taking responsibility, but on a positive manner. We have situations where people have been elected into leadership, but they destroy more than build. Let's move on. Let's move on. So good leadership Take me back. So good leadership abhors tolerance. Good leadership will not entertain mediocre, mediocrity. Good leadership will not allow things to go wrong because the boss is not there and it is the responsibility of the boss. A good leadership will take the initiative, do it, and explain it afterwards. Leaders are usually angry people. It is, and that's a fact. You most likely find that it is, it is only when we get angry that things change. And sometimes you can go on a routine for so long in an organization until you get one person who walks into the manager's office and says, this cannot work. So it, is, it, it calls for initiative. It, it calls for being brave in, in, in doing things. Brave in a positive manner. You know, there are people who want to talk loud to the manager to be heard so that he can say, but did you hear me talk? That is not brave. <laughs> that is foolishness. If I, if I may say so, <laughs> you, are, you ought to be an honorable man, an honorable lady who will be able to, but there must be a limit for you to be able to, to say that this can no longer work, okay? It must change. And it must change, must not be, must not be seen to be rude. You can be able to say it firmly, okay, to the extent that your boss will be, will understand that this is a matter of concern and it will be taken in seriously. Um, so, it abhors tolerance. It looks for improvement in everything that is done. Let's move on. So, I think that the, the question that then appears at the bottom is, why are we here? So, why have we been called here? Is it because it is an annual meeting? Why did you come? What caused you to leave home? be here? Is it to, you came to see my elder, Professor Ngeri, or you wanted to see the architect? What is it that you are hoping to get from this? I've had instances where young people face a lot of challenges in church because the way that young people plan things are different from the way that elders plan things. Because elders would want to look in and say, why are you going to Longonot? And, uh, and the youth will say, it is an in program. And the elders will say, it is an outing. And sometimes we will struggle over that. 
the youth feeling that they are not being understood. Sometimes the elders feel that they are wasting money. But I always tell the elders that, you know, if they don't go to Longonot, they may not come here. Am I talking on behalf of some people? <laughs> if, if, if they don't go to Longonot, just guess where they could be spending their time. So when we say, are we going to give youth uh, lunch on Sabbath? And some people feel that it's a waste. They say sometimes it's good to give them that lunch because it keeps them to be in the company of the brethren rather than running out there. So you use the opportunity to bring about positive, positive change even when it is difficult. And sometimes it takes leadership to be in the church board to be able to say that. It also takes leadership for one of the youth or one of the young professionals to be able to say that indeed what the elder is saying is also right. Because there's give and take in leadership. So good, the, the organizations that thrive normally thrive out of good leadership. It, good leadership includes allowing others to play their role if they don't feel, um, they don't feel uh, intimidated. We had a leader in Mombasa that um, in his organization, if he came and met you in the lift, he would do this to you. And and once he's done that, he actually sends out a letter of termination just because he doesn't like your face. You know, eventually, this thing got around. And one day, the owners of the company came from Europe and they also did this to him. <laughs> and when, when that was done for him, then we're on a flight from Mombasa. And here he is moaning at how many years he had put in that knee. And I'm saying to myself, does he know how many people he has put into misery? By just that you don't like the face of a person and you do this, and you actually go to your office and write to show that you have power. Leadership must have limits. And I want to say that transformational leadership moves to the people. It moves to the people must, people must be able to benefit. I want to give you an example that we did in Mombasa again. Just before the 90s, customs declarations was done on paper. It's still printed on paper, but you had to do it on paper. And we were clearing motor vehicles in what we call CKDs, completely knocked down kits. You see them at General Motors. You see them parked there. You come and you bring them. And in those days, it used to take us two weeks to do an entry. Two weeks, the lady is just typing to do, to, to do that. So I, I decided that this cannot happen. It cannot continue. My, my elder, I went to customs. I said, I want to computerize my customs declaration. I went and approached someone from KPA and brought him into the company. He was a systems analyst. I went to IBM and approached a programmer. Then I said, I want to computerize our customs declaration. Now, I then decided to have a meeting 
with my staff. And the head of declaration came to me and said, Mr. Kedanda, you know, this can't happen. This is impossible. So I wrote in my heart that this man cannot be in the team. He's already blocked his head. <laughs> He's already blocked his mind. So I said, you go in there, talk to these people, and get to know how this system works and give me a program. We did the program in a record time. And by just doing the, the entry on computer, we cut the time for doing the declaration from two weeks to four days. The problem that we had is that customs say that you must declare on what is called a flimsy paper. For us to speed up, we are, we are declaring on computer paper. And when we got there, all our entries were rejected. The calculations were right, but the paper was wrong. So I went, I went to customs and asked them, what do you want? Is it the figures or is it the paper? And they said, Mr. Kedenda, this is the law. It is written in the Customs Act, do it on flimsy paper. It took us 10 years, 10 years to get to the point where we could declare on computer. And there were people sitting in those offices who could see that the government could save time and could do it, but unwilling to change. And so if you don't have a transformational mind, all that you see are obstacles. All that you see is how this is going to... And you know, it was costing us money because every entry that you're passing now, they demand some money because things are delaying. When we got a transformation leader, he turned out to be also a terrorist, in a way. Because now it had to be done, and be done whether you like it or not. And in that instance, the country lost a lot of money. I'm talking to you because you are going to be the managers of tomorrow. You are going to make decisions tomorrow. You, some of you in, are in government, some of you are in private organization. <laughs> but you must be able to understand that change is taking place. You must be able to go ahead. I went to the system commissioner of customs and said, look, here is the proof. Why don't we go to Nairobi to prove that it is happening? He told me, Mr. Kedanda, look behind me. And when I looked behind him, there was a computer that had been donated by the British government. That was there that was being used. I want you to be men and women of excellence. Men who are willing to make changes. Men and women who, when you see good things happen, you are able to buy that idea. And you know, even in church, we have a problem sometimes. Because we also have elders who are 19 to Rudy. They will not move, they will not change. This is how it has always been done. And some of you are going to go in and you'll be in that regiment that this is how work is being done in this company. I want you to be a different lot of people. I want you people who can challenge and challenge with humility and be able to present your case so that changes can come through. Because unless you do it, Kenya will always be behind. I want to say something that I don't know how to place it. All of us who are here, it is good to pray. It is good to pray, and I pray. But do something. 
You know, there's that prayer that's prayer and thing until something happens. Sometimes nothing is going to happen. Sometimes it will take you <laughs> to happen. Am I making sense? That, that you, are, you are praying indefinitely for work and you're not applying. You are, you are planning for business in your mind and you are never going out to do business. And you are a professional, well-educated. But you have in your mind that you must be employed. Who said that everyone who graduates must be employed? Good morning, class. Who said that everyone, everyone who leaves college must be employed? I have a guy at home in the village who did electrical. And I'm telling him that, you know, people who graduated with you are contractors. He comes and works there with some Chinese. He goes home and he calls that I'm unemployed. I said, I'm stuck in there. I said, why are you unemployed? Why are you not employing yourself? And until we have that transformational mind that says, I can do it. I can, if, 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 if my classmate is doing it, if, if he's constructing, if he's, if he's able to, to be a contractor of a house in my village, why am I looking for employment? And some young people, young ladies, men, We'll be spending time at home and could still be spending time at home now. And when you ask them, they say that I don't have an employment. He's an electrical engineer. He's a water engineer. People are doing plumbing all over the place, but he's saying that he's unemployed. And he's living in Nairobi, commuting, seeing friends, and asking for bus fare. Good morning, class. Is this what you expected me to talk about? Or am I insulting you? I just want to talk about the truth. That our young professionals must be able to go beyond employment. Sometimes it, you are better off starting off non-employed than being employed. I want to give you an example quickly so that I can move on. I thank God that when I graduated from Nairobi University, within one week I was employed, within one week I had a company car. I thank God I could drive around. I had a Subaru, a very good car. Then I went to Mombasa, I got a good job in Mombasa but the company belonged to the, to the owners. One day when I'm in Nairobi, I get a phone call, and I'm told to report to the Minister of Transport. And when I get to the Minister of Transport, the PS removes a letter and gives me, and he says, I've been appointed to, to head a parastatal. I said, I've not applied. I'm not applied for this job. I don't know who, who is giving me this job. I don't know. I don't know. But you know, the one who's appointing me is the owner of the company. So I go. Do you know that my employment there ended like that? I could not say, no, I'm staying. Because the one who's appointing me is the owner of the company and is the owner of the government. So it went. It went. So I went to that company. I served for three years. And then one day someone calls me and says, Mr. Kidanda, do you know that so-and-so has been appointed to take your position? <laughs> I want you, to, I want you to, to, to know this, because some people may not tell you experience of what goes on, okay? 
you are fighting for jobs, you are trying to be appointed. You know, when you are appointed, those days you used to be appointed at one o'clock. You could also be disappointed at one o'clock. Okay? <laughs> so even today, you can be appointed and be disappointed. There are people who just saw in the papers that their positions have been taken in the, in the recent appointments. So how do you handle that? For the last five years, you've been driven around. And now you don't even have a car. You had someone who was opening the door for you. Okay? Now no one's opening the door. And all this time, you are spending your time with the people who are rioting. If your friend buys a car, you also buy a car. If they change the TV, you change the TV. It happens. I'm, I'm, I'm talking to these young people because that, that is there. I'll, I'll, give, I'll give you one last time. And <laughs> so I'm staying here in Westlands. And my neighbor is competing with the other neighbor. They're young people like, like us. This is the early 80s, OK? So they buy a colored TV. And I think his darling was says, how can we remain here with the white, black and white? They go and buy. Then they go, this guy goes and buys a new car, a new car, a saloon car. This guy goes to the office, OK? He takes a loan, buys a new car. After a while, this gentleman arrives with a, with a Range Rover. Him has recently just taken a loan. He doesn't know how this guy is working. Okay? All he knows is that this guy, he looks like my age mate, our children, we are staying in the same estate. So if he buys a car, I buy a car. Let me tell you how this guy was buying a car. This guy used to go and siphon oil from pipeline. He goes and takes a whole tanker free of charge, and when he sells it, it's about five million. He can buy the he can buy the Range Rover in those days. So I want you to be level-minded. I want, I want to, as good Christians, I, I thank God for the lesson for this lesson. Did you hear about covetousness? Did you read about it? Did it mean anything to you? There are people who will not tell you these stories. And I want you to take these stories. Look after your work. Be exceptional in your work. Do a good job. Your company is able to pay for you your medical bills. Do a good job. Your company is able to train you. Do a good job. Because there's a time that is coming when that company is going to restructure. Then you will find out. You will find out how difficult it is, it is to go to the hospital. Am I making sense to anyone here? You know when you have the med medical card, you cough kidogo, you are takakan. What happens when you are retrenched? And now you can't go to Agakan. And you didn't invest in that line. I'm talking to you young professionals to be good stewards, to learn how to save, to learn how to invest. Learn how to invest. Last comment is this. Have you heard about Amazon? Have you heard about eBay? How many of you buy through eBay? Just say it, just say it. It's okay, I'm not going to say a bad thing. <laughs> I, 
I want to tell you something that's happening to Africa that you, I want you to remember. While Africans are fighting themselves in business, Europe is merging to do business in Africa. The clearing and foreign companies are merging. If you hear something, SDV, it is a merger. I wish I had one on Gary Kidenda. <laughs> That I could work with. Learn to start working as a team and just be diligent in your work. Don't, don't think that you can win that contract on your own. If you are going to borrow too much, you will quarrel with your wife if you are married, you will quarrel with your parents and everyone else. Learn to work in partnerships. And just be faithful. Just be faithful in the work that you do so that you can grow. It's no use walking into the city here looking for contracts which are going to cause you to borrow a lot of money which you could have shared, okay? And then one day you're sold off. I'd like to kindly request that as good Adventists, as good professionals, I'm going to share with you my purpose. Bring professionalism in your work. Bring it in there and do it just like those other people are doing it. Be diligent in it and be willing to be patient to grow your business. Don't in a hurry, because when you get into a hurry, you become corrupt. You do not want to say it, but it will force you to be corrupt. It will cause you to get into debt that you cannot afford. And yet, you have partners here in church that you can partner with. Choose them well. Choose them well, because even here in church, they are con men. They are con men. They will call you, they will go with your money. But look diligently, look carefully, and get into business. Because the government that used to employ us, you come from, you come from, you come from graduation and you get a letter of appointment. That government is no longer there. There's no one who's going to give you and you are waiting for a letter of appointment. Even the teachers are not getting those letters of appointment. I don't know whether I'm making sense to you. You must have a transformed mind. And this professional body here can take you far. If what my sister here is teaching you, the things that they are talking about here, if you put them in practice, you will go far. But if you walk alone, you will lo walk long, but you will not go far. You will just be wasting money in things that you can't afford. Have I, have I talked badly? If I've talked badly, forgive me. But I wanted to tell you this because I see it. I see it and I have walked it. I've walked it. I told you one time I, I, was, I was given a lot of the place where I was appointed. I was now terminated on a fax machine. They asked, Mr. Kedenda, are you there? Yes. Are you in your fax machine? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I got, I got so this appointment that you're looking for here, okay? Unless you want to go and steal while you are there. If you are going to, you are better off doing your own business than going in some of these appointments. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you will pay dearly for it. Go. Go and do it. But I'm saying be careful. Be faithful. Be a good steward. In Jesus' name.